Hello, dedicated viewers, and welcome to Cinema Scene. We all admire and listen in awe to stories of superhuman accomplishments. These great achievements are born through the fruits of determination and inner strength. In today's program, we will feature motivational stories about success that derives from hard work and perseverance. Aquila and the Bee, St. Ralph and Invictus. Our first feature is the 2006 production, Aquila and the Bee. Written and directed by Doug Atchison, the film tells the heartfelt story of 11-year-old Aquila Anderson, who has a talent for spelling words. Aquila, played by young Kiki Palmer, informs the audience from the start that she simply feels she does not fit in. She lives in an underprivileged neighborhood of South Los Angeles, USA, and attends Crenshaw Middle School, which does not have enough funding to provide many educational opportunities for its students. An 11-year-old seventh grader, Akila is a bright young girl who thirsts for knowledge that neither her school nor her community can provide. She often skips class or does not apply her full potential to her work, partly due to boredom and partly because she worries that she will be teased for her intelligence. At home, her mother is always busy with her job as a nurse and trying to keep all of her children in line. Akila finds solace in studying words in honor of her deceased father, who helped her foster a love for language and scrabble. Akila's gift for words is noted by her teacher, and as a repercussion for her repeated absences, Akila must participate in the school's spelling bee. Meanwhile, the school's principal, Welch, played by Curtis Armstrong, invites to the event his longtime acquaintance and English professor, Dr. Joshua Larrabee, played convincingly by Oscar-nominated actor Lawrence Fishburne. As the shy Aquila breezes through the competition for the win, Dr. Larrabee notices her potential and further tests her with complex words. Aquila is encouraged to pursue the prestigious Scripps National Spelling Bee in Washington, D.C. Though reluctant, Aquila's interest is sparked and she prepares for the Los Angeles District Spelling Bee by herself. There, she gets her first taste of what a real spelling bee is like. She also meets fellow speller Javier, played by J.R. Villarreal, as well as the top contender for the national spelling bee, Dylan, played by Sean Michael Affable. With some luck, Aquila ends up as one of the top 10 finalists, qualifying her to move on to the next round. The other contestants, who are from higher class backgrounds, are receiving outside support in their preparations. Dylan, for one, receives rigorous training from his overbearing father. Realizing that she needs help, Akila asks Dr. Larby to coach her. Though at first, Dr. Larby holds a rather cold demeanor, he eventually agrees. With his no-nonsense attitude and strict discipline, Akila progresses further in her journey to the National Bee. More importantly, Akila finds courage to live up to her full God-given potential. Akila's mother, however, is against her endeavors, concerned that it is affecting her daughter's schoolwork. Despite this, Akila's determination cannot be swayed. As Akila strives to reach her goals, she gradually helps warm the hearts of those around her and gains the support of her entire community. More importantly, Akila realizes that to be a true winner, she must be true to herself. Akila and the Bee is a heartwarming story that holds a valuable lesson for the whole family. Indeed, there is much more to winning than just the trophy. The vibrant spirit and motivation of young Akila, brilliantly depicted by Kiki Palmer, reminds us all of the importance of love and good sportsmanship. Akila and the Bee won 10 awards, including the 2007 Black Reel Best Actress Award for Kiki Palmer's performance. We will now pause for some brief messages. Cinema Scene will be right back with two more films, so stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Cinema Scene. Our second feature, Saint Ralph, was written and directed by Michael McGowan and released in 2004. The movie tells the story of 14-year-old Catholic Ralph Walker, played by Adam Butcher, and his quest to win the 1954 Boston Marathon. Ralph Walker is a ninth grader at a Catholic private school. His father has passed away, 
and he pays daily visits to the hospital where his critically ill mother lies bedridden under the tender care of Nurse Alice, played by Jennifer Tilly. To authority figures at the school, Ralph is supposedly residing with his grandparents, but in actuality, they have also passed away. Though Ralph would be better off not letting others find out that he is a minor living alone. He repeatedly draws attention to himself through his mischievous tendencies. Wishing to discipline Ralph, the school's stern headmaster, Father Fitzpatrick, played by Gordon Pinsent, compels Ralph to join the cross-country team, which is coached by Father Hibbert, played by Campbell Scott. Soon, Ralph's mother falls into a coma, and the team is told that it would take a miracle for her to reawaken. In class, he learns that for such an event to occur, it requires faith, purity, and prayer. Later at running practice, Father Hibbert says that it would be a miracle if a member of his team won the Boston Marathon. Putting two and two together, Ralph figures that if he finishes the race, it could be the miracle that would restore his mother's health. He is further convinced when a figure that he believes to be God appears to him, encouraging him to run the race. He seeks the guidance of Father Fitzpatrick on how to keep pure and pray. However, Father Fitzpatrick expresses disapproval of Ralph's notions. Moreover, Ralph can barely finish one cross-country practice, let alone keep up with his teammates or run a marathon. Even the more understanding Father Hibbert who had once been an Olympic hopeful before injuring his knee, discourages Ralph from his plans. But Ralph persists, reading books to learn more about running and on past saints who performed miracles. Touched by the boy's dedication, Father Hibbert decides to help Ralph. But when Father Fitzpatrick learns that Ralph still intends to participate in the Boston Marathon, he threatens to expel him and remove Father Hibbert from the priesthood should they continue. Now, both Ralph and his mentor must decide if they are willing to put everything on the line, even if success is not guaranteed. Saint Ralph is an inspirational film about spirituality and self-confidence. Ralph's seemingly bizarre earnestness and innocence brings refreshing humor to a touching plot, which reminds that a little faith goes a long way. Saint Ralph won six awards, including the Grand Prix from the 2005 Paris Film Festival. Our final movie is Invictus, directed by Oscar-winning actor and director Clint Eastwood. The story is based on a book by English-born journalist and author John Carlin. This 2009 biographical film takes us from the time of the dismantling of apartheid in South Africa to the 1995 Rugby World Cup, which was hosted in the nation. The film begins as Nelson Mandela, played by Oscar award-winning actor Morgan Freeman, has just been elected as the first black president of South Africa after 27 years in a tiny prison cell. It is clear that tensions in the country still exist, but President Mandela maintains his optimistic demeanor. Upon taking office, he asks that his staff put aside their past differences and focus on creating a brighter tomorrow for their shared country. His personal bodyguards object when he asks them to work alongside white members of the special branch. But President Mandela reminds them that forgiveness is key to rebuilding. The new leader is undaunted as he faces the challenge of unifying all South Africans, both whites and blacks, into one rainbow nation. Thereafter, President Mandela attends a rugby match in which it becomes apparent that the national team, the Springboks, is not performing well. Due to former conflicts, the team has only divided support from their co-citizens. When the South African Sports Commission votes to rename the Springboks and ban their gold and green colors, President Mandela personally appeals to them to reconsider their actions. In a passionate speech, he emphasizes that endorsing the team would help heal the rift between the South African people. He then goes on to invite Springboks captain Francois Pinar played by the Oscar-winning Matt Damon to tea. The president talks to the non-political athlete about the importance of inspiring others by example. Indeed, leaders have the power of motivating people to achieve the seemingly unachievable. After the meeting, Francois realizes that President Mandela 
is encouraging the Springboks to win the World Cup, thus joining all South Africans in cheer and hope for a united and harmonious new nation. Invictus is the triumphant true story of President Nelson Mandela and how he helped turn the national rugby team, the Springboks, into a symbol of national reconciliation. The movie title Invictus, which is Latin for unconquered, originates from the 1875 poem by English author William Ernest Henley, which inspired President Mandela during his time in detainment. His peaceful, equitable manner and charm is beautifully depicted in this film, which exemplifies President Mandela's remarkable willpower and noble leadership. In 2010, Invictus was nominated for two Oscars and three Golden Globes, and also won six other prizes, including the Black Reel Award for Best Actor, Aquila and the Bee, St. Ralph and Invictus are truly uplifting films which demonstrate that behind every winner is a story of hard work, perseverance and willpower. It was a pleasure having you with us for today's cinema scene. Coming up next is vegetarianism, the noble way of living after noteworthy news here on Supreme Master Television. May you succeed in all your noble endeavours. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash cs.